Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening. Richard Nixon, 37th President of the United States, famous for opening relations with China, and, of course, the Watergate scandal. Well, I'm not a crook. But did you know he was also partially responsible for ushering in the era of the federal government missing budget deadlines? This chart shows how rare it is for Congress to pass spending bills on time. They first did it in 1977, when the current budgeting system went into effect. Then again in 1989, twice in the 90s, and then... It has become very, very rare for Congress to do all of their work by the September 30th deadline. How did it come to this? Why is it so hard to pass spending bills on time? Historically, budgetary power swung between the president and Congress, with the president dominating the process for most of the 20th century. Then came Nixon. He repeatedly impounded funds, refused to give money that Congress appropriated for various programs. The fights between the Nixon administration and Congress over the impoundment of funds and in the post-Watergate setting led to the legislating of the 1974 Budget and Impoundment Control Act. The law was meant to reclaim congressional authority over the budget. It also laid out the basic process that Congress is supposed to follow, which in theory goes like this. The president submits his budget proposal. Next, both chambers draft a budget resolution, a kind of roadmap for how much money to spend. And then finally, by October 1st, when the new fiscal year begins, Congress passes a dozen separate spending bills to fund the government. That's how it's supposed to work. But that isn't how it actually works usually. Oftentimes they're late from the start. And it only gets worse. Down the line, deadlines are either missed or skipped altogether. They try to catch up by marking up 12 appropriations bills, at least in the House, but they're too late to actually enact things by September 30th. So what happens if they miss the fiscal year deadline? Sometimes the government shuts down, but most of the time Congress kicks the can down the road with a continuing resolution, or CR. A CR typically keeps things funded at the same levels as before, but only for a short time. That is not good governance, and lawmakers don't like them, but it is necessary to avoid a shutdown. So one big reason it's so hard to pass spending bills is the process has become so complex and convoluted. Thanks, President Nixon. The other reason? Partisanship and an increasingly polarized Congress. Part of the reason shutdown threats have increased lately is that it is often seen as a political weapon or a legislative tactic. Believe me, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall. I think shutting down the government is worth the risk to save those jobs in Kansas. This government should be shut down. All this for only a fraction of the federal budget. The mandatory portion of the federal budget, which makes up about three quarters of federal spending, continues during a shutdown. So the fights that Congress has over, at this point, 1.6 to 1.7 trillion dollars is a fairly small portion of the six plus trillion dollar federal budget. If only Congress could spend less time fighting about the budget they could spend more time on things that truly matter. A bill to designate the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 6531 Van Nuys Boulevard in Van Nuys, California as the Marilyn Monroe Post Office. 